Hello everybody! We are so excited that you are here with us. If this is your first time with us, welcome to Life Church Muskoka. We are passionate to see the kingdom of heaven on earth right now, and you get to be a part of it. Mark your calendars. Prophet Daniel Soda will be with us Sunday, December 3rd at 10 a.m. Daniel walks intimately with the Holy Spirit, living a lifestyle of the prophetic everywhere he goes as he ministers all around the globe. This will be an extraordinary time with the Holy Spirit. And with Daniel Soto, and we met him because of his walk with God. Yeah, Life Church has a very crazy story when it comes to Daniel Soto. We should ask him about that. Join us Wednesday nights at 6.30 p.m. as we start Presence Nights in a society that is weary, anxious, tired, burnt out, and hungry for more. We believe that the presence of God has the power to transform us into a life of wholeness and satisfied joy. We want to intentionally seek the presence of God together through authentic worship and prayer. Come encounter the presence of God with us Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. We encourage our Bible school students to show up 30 minutes before class to rest and enjoy prayer and worship. Save the day! Jingle bells, jingle bells. <laughs> On Friday, December 15th, Life Church will be having oh, our annual semi formal is... Christmas banquet. We had so much fun last year. Get your tickets now. Tickets are $35 each. Only $35. And you will need a ticket to be at this exciting event. You can purchase tickets at the back welcome table or email office at lifeic.org. I should add in there for you this year we have a whole different menu with Smoke and Joe's out of Huntsville. They are the ones that are doing the beef, brisket, and some other goodies, but more on that later. It's gonna be good. It is so. Join us Monday nights for young adults. We are passionate about learning to follow Jesus together, for him, for us. If you are 18 to 30 years old, come on out at 6.30 p.m. on Mondays. Be sure to follow mondays.ya on Instagram for more weekly details or email kate at lifeic.org. Oasis Youth meets from 7 to 9 p.m. on Tuesdays. If you're between the ages of 12 and 18 years, we'd love to see you there. Bring your friends and join us for a fun night as we go after more of God together. Be sure to follow at oasismuskoka.youth for weekly details or email joel at lifeic.org. And that's a wrap for what's happening at Life Church. If you'd like to get more involved with what God is doing here, head to our website at lifeic.org slash weekly. Do do do. Enjoy the conference. It's a Christmas wrap. <laughs>
and justice on the earth. Anywhere and everywhere you can find his faithful, unfailing love. All he had to do was speak by his spirit wind command, and God created the heavenly. Do you know when we use this mouth of ours to speak the word of the Lord out of our mouths, we are actually partnering with heaven, and we are doing our Father's business, releasing the word of the Lord, releasing the power of the Lord, and releasing the glory of God. Lord, we thank you for this place, God. We thank you, Lord, that we can come and we can praise you. We can worship you with every bit within us, with all our heart, all our mind, all our strength, all of, with every part of our body. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you are going to do something amazing in this place today. And I thank you, Father, for your angels that are already here. Lord, I thank you for multiplying it. And I thank you, Lord, that heaven and earth this morning.
Go that slow, John. You gotta, you gotta take it up to 110, 120. I'm falling asleep. I'm falling asleep with that.
Resurrection power. Your blood runs through our veins. Your kingdom triumphs over even the coldest grave. There's resurrection power. Triumphs over even the coldest grave. We sing, come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is the house of miracles. We bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything. In the name of Jesus, this is the house of miracles. This is a house of worship. This is a place of praise. Okay, we're going to just try something here. We're going to sing that again, and when, when we say it's a place of praise, let her rip. Let her rip. It really, it really bothers the other stuff in the spiritual world. And then, wherever we even trembles, Come on. where we proclaim your name. Jesus, pray. It's a house of miracles. Yeah. And actually, you are the house. You know that, right? You're, you're tabernacling His presence. We believe. And so, corporately, when we all come together like this, hey. there's an explosion in the spiritual realm. Oh. Everything in the name of Jesus. This is 
Reaching all over us, all over us, all over us, all over us, all over us. before him burns up all his enemies fire goes before him burns up all his enemies oh the hills melt like wax at the presence of the Up all, it burns up all his enemies. It burns up all his enemies. It burns up all his enemies. Oh, it burns up all sickness. Burns up all disease. Burns up all poverty. Burns up all depression. Burns up all fear. Burns up all doubt. Burns up all shame. Burns up all guilt. Burns up. Burns up. Burns up. Burns up all.
making us more like you. We bow our knees, we bow our knees to you, we bow our knees to your spirit, holy, holy. All those enemies are scattered. All those enemies are scattered. Those things holding those things back for you are scattered. They're scattered. They're scattered. Hey! Team, it's Sunday morning. Woo! All right. How many Woo! did we? Uh, how many endured that? Endured it. Yeah. That was fun. Or did you flow this morning? Because that was a flow. Woo! And the difficulty is that once you once you get into the flow, you you feel like you're going to be disobedient to get out of it. So I don't oh. know how many were here for some of the meetings that we had last weekend, but this is a great great teaching moment. Because there was a couple of times, and I'll just, I'll just expose some of the ignorance in the church. And it wasn't actually at this meeting, so we're going to protect the guilty. But there was a meeting happening recently, and there was a young, young person, and they were actually in travail, because that's what that was called. And we're actually going to talk about that a little bit later today. We're going to teach you a little bit more how it is to get into the deeper things of God, so that when you pray, stuff actually happens. Like, literally, when you go to prayer, things change. And there was a meeting not too long ago, and there was a young person, and they were in travail. And somebody actually came up and wanted to do deliverance on them. I'm actually saying that as trying to say, that's the state of the church. They thought they were demonically manifesting on the floor, when in reality, they were in deep prayer and groaning out for souls and salvation and healing and miracles. That's like, you know, so again, I say that for two things. I say it as a teaching moment, but I also say it as like, oh my goodness, church, we've got to get that discernment sharpened. We've got to realize and recognize what is going on. Wearing a three-piece suit and a tie does not make me more anointed behind the microphone. Somebody said it makes me look better. <laughs> So, 
It's so true. And I mean, religion really majors on the appearance of things. And it's difficult to pull the wool over my eyes. I came from a funeral background. So we majored in taking something that was not really presentable and making it presentable. And there was no light in it. So God doesn't want to do that to you this morning. He wants you to, even if it's not palatable, He wants you to drink up, good soldier, and realize that God disciplines those that He loves. And so, you know, the... You're going to have to have that lady removed if she's a distraction. Now, I, I really believe the Lord spoke to me this season that we have just kind of come out of and are transitioning into another season is that people are finding out their identity. Because rough waters will show your identity. Right? A storm, if you're on a farm or if you're in a some sort of an operation or some sort of a, a mission or some sort of a work thing, a storm or when things go wrong, that actually brings out the identity of who's really been eating their Wheaties in the morning and, and really the season that the church, I don't mean just this church, I mean the church, the season the church has been in is, come on, it's time to wake up and realize just how amazing your God is and how much He loves you and honors you and wants to empower you and wants to see you full of joy and see you celebrating life and life more abundantly, see you full of the joy of the Lord that is your strength that doesn't depend on circumstances and things happening outside. It's all an inside job. The joy of the Lord. So, hey, hey, we it. Woo. so Whitney, you're doing uh, tithes and offerings this morning. I'm going to bring uh, Whitney. Why don't you give her a uh, welcome? We're going to use the, come on, stand up, the green uh, tape microphone there. So... We like to stand up and honor people. So, uh, Whitney is an elder in the church. And right there, I know that causes a whole lot of stir. So, that's good. Okay. So, is it on? Is it yeah, on? I think so. Can you hear me? Yeah. I've been in a lot of offices of high-profile people. And they usually have their... You can sit down now. We just honor it. So many people just say, well, we want to honor Whitney, double honor. But I don't know if any of you have been in Whitney's office. But behind the wall in her, she's got a, a lot of trophies. <laughs> but the ones that I'm referring to are actually the business awards that she has won. And uh, I was talking to somebody recently. I think I think it was one of our guests or whatever. And, and they had heard that you're in business. And and uh, they said, yeah, doesn't she do some little thing or something? I went, yeah, actually, no. And actually, Whitney's a big deal. She, uh, she has offices across Canada. So maybe some of you don't realize that, uh, but this um, young woman here beside me works very hard. Uh, she puts in regular 16, 17, 18-hour days, and she has a large staff, and she manages to come out like on a Saturday morning and decorate the church as well. So she is the real deal. So we, we don't just we just don't make eldership our friends and say, Oh, this is my buddy, I'm gonna make them an elder. You know, I sought the Lord for a long time, six, eight months, and said, Lord, who do I who do I select or who do you feel is is the ones for and Whitney was one that I actually hesitated. And uh, there was one time, I don't know if you guys remember, we did those outdoor services. Do you remember that? We had the tarps and all that. And we were in the parking lot. It was raining, I think, one day, and the tarps are blowing around and everything. And I really felt strongly, again, the Lord just impressing upon me, you need to ask Whitney to be an elder. So I had a casual, do you remember that day? <laughs> I come up, I don't know, we're wet, and there's cords flying around and everything in the wind. I'm like, Whitney, 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 I, you know, I just, you know, I really believe, and I did some silly introduction. I'm like, I really want you to pray about, I was doing this politically correct kind of thing. Just seek the Lord with me about, you know, I, I really think God's asking me to ask you to be an elder and you to, yeah, I'll do it. And uh, anyway, that is Whitney. It, 
she will jump in. And uh, she has a walk with God. And, uh, you know, we get persecuted for that. And so it's been my pleasure on many occasions when Whitney hasn't been around even, when I've got a chance to defend her. When someone has said something negative about Whitney, I'm like, you have no idea who you're talking about. <laughs> She's a great gal. So Whitney, I, with great um, honor this morning, uh, say thank you for doing tithes and offerings this morning, and thank you for being an elder, and thank you for your input into the decisions that we make as a body that's going to affect lots and lots of people. Amen. Thank you. Um, yeah, that was funny when he asked me, because, like, how many know, like, God will speak to him to you first. So, like, God told him, like, you're before, God also told me you're before, so I was like, you know, like, when's he going to ask? When's he going to ask? So when he said it, I was like, uh-huh. Because <laughs> I, I knew already. Um, but, yeah, I get to do our uh, tithes and offerings this morning. Um, how many of y'all love a good testimony? I don't have one. I'm just curious. <laughs> no, but I've heard lots of testimonies this year of people who've, you know, sewn into, you know, their mortgages being paid off, and then their mortgages were paid off, and who've sewn into, you know, prodigal sons and daughters returning home, and they did, and, you know, healings and miracles and all sorts of things. I've heard people sew into all sorts of stuff this year. But what happens when you're one of the ones who's been sewing and uh, you haven't seen it yet? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're just like, <laughs> hello, <laughs> remember me? Um, you know, a couple weeks ago, Dan, Pastor Dan had alluded to, you know, the story of Joseph. You know, he had this promise. He's like, woohoo, like going, you know, didn't have the right heart in the beginning. But, you know, he he knew what God had for him. And he's like saying it because he wants to do it. And then he goes through this like 13-year journey um, of a journey, <laughs> you know. So, you know, but he, you know, he kept, I believe, the right heart in, in that season of preparation for where God was taking him to. Um, and, you know, I'll be honest, like, I'm in, like, one of those seasons right now. And, like, God, like I think the heaven, like, loves when we're, like, vulnerable and real and whatever about the seasons and the places that we're in. So, like, this year, whew, y'all, it has been, like, you know, but, you know y'all, we, we've had some stuff. You know, the stuff hit the fan a couple times. But, you know, God told me earlier this year, start a business and a new business. I'm like, okay, no problem. And I'm like, just like how I responded to Dan or something like, when somebody says it, God says it, I'm like, let's do it. Like, I'm ready. Come on. And so he said, start this business. Basically, the day I get the licenses, the phone's ringing, clients coming in. Like, I mean, it was instantaneous. I'm like, yeah, come on. Some of them were just summer contracts for that particular company. One of them was um, like a full-time contract with like a really prestigious um, organization in Muskoka, they ended up being terrible. Didn't pay their bills, had to, like, send legal threats. Like, so sometimes you're like, you think you're there, you think you're in the breakthrough, and then you're like, this is the opposite. What is happening here? Um, you know, my main company has felt a t- like a tight squeeze this year. We'll probably lose somewhere in the realm of a half a million this year. That's just as, like, a base. We had contracts that were coming up for renewal that other people were working on that we placed bids on into the multi-millions. And we didn't get those bids. And then when you see the people who get them, and you're like, I've done business with those guys before. They're the kind of guys that are like, hey, John, how many kids do you have? You want your kids to go to private school? Well, we'll, we'll make a donation to that school so your kids can go. So it takes the fairness out of business because they're just buying his kid's education or a vacation or whatever, right? Um, you know, my role as a, in, in the city was, was challenged. And, you know, you're dealing with that political sphere all the time, and that is annoying to deal with. It's very challenging. And it's like the patience that I sometimes don't have, but God's doing something, right? And, you know, we've had challenges here in this body where offense came in and then division came in, right? So kind of like a Joseph story where you're like, you got these calls, you got this thing you're doing, and it seems the full opposite of what it is. But what's God doing in that process? So are y'all feeling that way at all? Anybody in kind of a season like that where you're like, what? Remember all those words? Like, they're so good. Um, but I want to encourage you today to sow into harvest. I don't know when yours is coming. I don't know when mine is coming, but I know it's going to come in the right timing. You know, so I just want to encourage you all, take a second right now, like, just to be like, Lord, what do you want me to sow into right now? And I tell you, you know, I'm sowing into success where I felt disappointment. I'm sowing into expansion where I felt restricted. I'm sowing into rest where there's been stress. I'm sowing into abundance where I've seen lack. I'm sowing into justice where I've seen injustice. I'm sowing into love and restoration where I've seen offense and division. I'm sowing into wisdom 
and strength where I've been distracted and weary. I'm sowing into the plans and the purposes of heaven over me where the plans of the enemy try to prevail. I'm sowing into preparation for myself for my next season. Because, you know, the best thing about the wilderness, there's lumberjacks there. <laughs> Emma! <laughs> You got to have heart in the fun, in these seasons, right? Because what else are you going to do? Because then the enemy's just going to get you, right? So you got to just see, like, there are good looking bearded lumberjacks in the wilderness. So, ha ha. Um, you know, or y'all can do the, sorry about the, y'all can do the bucket. Um, <laughs> sorry. But, you know, when I was praying about this, God always shows signs, right? Like, if we're paying attention, He's always showing something. So when I was first, like, all right, Lord, like, what do you want to, um, what do you want me to share, like, in a, in a tithe message? And, you know, I, he's funny, because, like, when you're just like, okay, what do you want to show me, you know, whatever. You know, I was praying about, like, even just breakthrough for people, breakthrough for us here. And I'm driving, and I see this license plate, personalized license plate that says, I've got this. So, I don't know who needs to know. If you're, if you're just like that, like, I just read to you some of the things I'm sewing into. Like, if you were saying some of the things you're sewing into, and you're like, God, are you going to do this? And he's like, I've got this. And then, you know, I step outside this morning, I go start my truck, and I see a woodpecker chewing on my tree. And uh, I did, like, so I had to look this up. So the woodpecker symbolizes new opportunities, creativity, optimism, courage, motivation, revival, self-actualization, balance, communication, protection, and discernment. This bird is most closely associated with opportunity and new possibilities. It inspires you to seize your desires and never give up on your dreams. So again, if we're paying attention to the things that he's got, so like by faith, whatever you're putting in there, like by faith, believe that he's going to do it. And he's the God of breakthrough. I don't know when. He's the God of, I don't know when. (laughs) But he's faithful and he's always going to come through. Well, uh, are we reading that? Okay. Y'all ready? Y'all stand up for this part. We got to like, uh. okay, you ready? I am powerful, and what I believe changes the world. So today I declare God is in a good mood. He loves me all the time. Nothing can separate me from his love. Jesus' blood paid for everything. I will tell nations of what he's done. I am important. How he made me is amazing. I was designed for worship. My mouth establishes praise to silence the enemy. Everywhere I go becomes a perfect health zone. And with God, nothing is impossible. So yeah, Lord, we just thank you right now, Father, for every person who sowed into something. Whatever that is, Father, you know the desires, you know where we need to go, the things we need to do, Father. So I thank you right now that even if people are in a season where they haven't seen breakthrough yet, Father, I thank you that you give a new level of joy, a new level of peace in that season, Father, that they can be the happiest of the happiest in the circumstance that maybe seems opposite. But I thank you, Father, for blessing each person in this house so that we can be a blessing to this region in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Thank you, Whitney. All right. So, I, you know, we had uh, just a wonderful time uh, last weekend. And I don't know if I've shared it or not, but one of the visions I have for our region here is that because the world comes up to Muskoka and enjoys the natural beauty and has built beautiful homes and really enjoys the outdoors and lots of different activities, I've had this vision for maybe a year or two that I would like to, a couple times a year, bring pastors and their wives or pastors and their husbands to this region, a group of them, so that they can minister not only in the Word here, but actually get ministered to. And so we've actually done that now a couple of times, and I don't know if you guys realize that, but I just wanted to let you know we've already done that with Sammy Robinson in the summertime. He was here for a few days. He did some meetings with us, but we also took some time and we took him out on a boat. We showed him around. And uh, David Cuppet uh, has come up as well. And then this time, Joe Bieber as well. And this time, we, we, we were able to have an Airbnb. And so after some of the meetings, we would go back and just dine together, eat together, laugh together, and spend time together. 
Because even in the body of Christ, you can have people that have very strong giftings and ministries, and they actually get almost prostituted when they come to a ministry. Meaning they, they, they just bring them in and say, okay, do your thing, dance. Here's your check. Go to the next town. God doesn't want that. And so I just want to encourage you, you guys are a part of what we're doing. We're developing relationships with these men and women of God. And maybe you don't see it, but I wanted to let you know behind the scenes, when they're giving 150% here on stage, after the meeting, our team is actually ministering to them. They're relaxing, and, and it's such a joy. And, and I know in the future you'll get to be more involved in that because there's giftings and callings in this house where you'll be a part of some of those after-hours meetings, which really, we are the family of God. So it's not a select few and, and you know, we hide away and nobody's allowed. No, it's a family. But we protect those people, and when they feel safe with us, it's amazing what they'll share. And so, what, one of the nights, we actually just had a good laugh about some of our bloopers. Because you can do that with family. You can say, man, this one time we got up and we did all this and we thought, and God was not in it at all. But then there's the recovery story as well. This is what we did. This is how we overcame. So I'd like you to go in your Bible this morning. We're going to talk a little bit about some of those things and some of the great lessons I've learned from some of these men and women of God the last year or so. John chapter 16 is where we're going to start today. It's in the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. John chapter 16. And we're going to look specifically at verse 33, and then we're going to get into Galatians a little bit. And our main text today is going to be Daniel, the book of Daniel. So God's already confirmed my word this morning through Whitney. She spoke a couple things, and I'll tell you what those were a little bit later. So we're going to start with John chapter 16, and just to make it official again, Holy Spirit, I thank you that you are already here, but we again officially say we welcome your presence, and we thank you that you don't work alone, but there are multitudes of angels when you fill a place. So we thank you for that realm called the spiritual realm that is all around us right now, and we thank you that you have permission, Lord, to do what you want to do, and we bless this congregation, we bless Muskoka this morning. We bless all that you've called this house to do. And we thank you, God, that we have successfully navigated into this next season in Jesus' name. Amen? John chapter 16, verse 33. If you're there, say I'm there. Does anybody have no idea where that is in the Bible? Anyone? Because we can hook you up with somebody that can help you find it. John, it's good for you to read your Bible. John chapter 16, this is Jesus speaking, and he says, These things I've spoken to you. That in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. <laughs> so let's just make that separation right now. In Jesus you're going to have... In the world you're going to have... So God is good. Peace. Worldly things will lead to tribulation. But, be of good cheer. Now, Jesus is making a big statement here. I have overcome the world. So we could break that down and say, I have overcome the spirit of the world. Does anybody know what the spirit of the world is? The spirit of the world is Antichrist. The Antichrist spirit is already at work in the world. So there's the spirit of God that gives you peace. Or there's the spirit of the world that will cause tribulation. It will, it will cause it. Meaning you can start to, or I can start to, or anybody can start to numb their problems with a multiplicity of different things that will bring a temporary relief on the flesh, but will bring tribulation at some point. Destruction at some point. 
so it is not our job as Christians to police other people. You know, it's interesting when you're in ministry, you bump into somebody and right away they're telling you all the reasons why they weren't at church. And you're just like, okay, I just wondered how you're doing. I, I like your motorcycle, or I like your house, or your car. Oh, yeah, well, I wasn't at No, I, I was actually talking about your house. I enjoy the kingdom. I enjoy flowing in the kingdom. But I recognize if I'm going to fully follow after the Lord, if I read my Bible, read what the disciples went through, I understand in the world there's going to be tribulation. In Jesus, there's peace. So even though I might be going through turbulence, anybody flown in a plane? It's a little unsettling. Nobody thinks anything in a truck, you're going down a bumpy road in Muskoka. But when you're at 30,000 feet going 650 miles an hour and there's a little bump, <laughs> what was that? What was that noise? I remember Linda and I got, we're in a plane one time, an airliner a couple of years ago, and it got struck by lightning and the power went out. And there was screaming in the ca- cabin and everybody, ah, are we going down? You know, what's that? People get unsettled. Why? What's the difference between a plane and a car? Well, you've got two dimensions on a car. So you've got, you got a problem in a car. You just all over. You go down the 400, the old 78 Ford that you just bought for 500 bucks that's illegal and you put your old plate on the back and you're not telling anybody. The steering's doing this and everything. It breaks down. You just pull over. But when you're at a thousand feet, two thousand feet, three, four, five, six, you don't pull over. You're now three dimensions. That same truth is in the church. It's easy to do two dimensions. How are you doing? Oh, I'm good. Good. You tithe this week? Yeah, I put my money in. I have my devotions every day. Everything's tight. Got my retirement all planned. And then Joe Bieber and Dave Cuppet come in. And there's a whole other dimension added. And you recognize that with God, He wants to take you to that realm where you can't pull over anymore. And in that realm, there is turbulence. But be of good cheer, because if you stay in the ship, if you stay on the airplane, can you imagine if every time there was a little bit of terms, I'm out of here, stewardess, open the door. (laughs) Whoop! It's like, we haven't even got off the runway yet. That was just a bump in the tarmac. So what you've experienced, been experiencing here, I feel like I have this Kevin Zadai anointing right now. He just, have you, anybody seen Kevin Zadai? When he, he just stands up for like three hours and talks. And there's demons manifesting and all kinds of things. Anyways, I feel like I'm, I've got that. Yeah, I'm talking about planes too. Um, but anyway, so many people, they're, they're yelling, I want to get out of the airplane. And you don't realize it's minus five outside. We're entering into winter. If you stay on the airplane, we're going to climb up and out above the clouds. And when we get to our destination, it is all inclusive. The drinks are on the house. You don't need to wear a jacket or boots or wherever. It's the point is that, as Whitney said, and it's almost like there's a twofold truth there. Like, I don't know when God's going to break through, but in some respects, He already has broken through, and He's asking us, are you going to break through to be with me? So 
So, like, what she said is correct because there will be a corporate breakthrough here. And as a, a very wise minister said to me, when, when the water rises, all the boats go up in the harbor. So, when the anointing comes to Muskoka, and actually Joe Beaver said it, there's going to be revival in Muskoka, and all the other churches are going to increase, whatever. When it comes, all the boats rise up. And that's okay. But there's something about when you are a part of the breakthrough. There's a blessing in it. Because that's when the times of refreshing come. Let's, let's just pop over just for a moment. Galatians chapter 5. So our scripture, does anybody know our scriptures for this week? John? Okay. We're putting a little more pressure on starting tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. I'm not kidding. But pastor, that's your day off. No, it isn't. I don't get a day off. There's times I take a time off, but I really don't get... Because no matter where I am, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for the church. But tomorrow morning at 6 a.m., we're going to have from 6 to 7, we're going to have prayer here in the church. Whether it's me and my family member or members, because I don't even think they're all coming. Did you want to say anything about that? Well, why don't you come on up? So, contrary to other people that don't realize, I do have two daughters. This is the other one. I'm it's on. Hello? You'll get it. Hello? Just be patient. It's the green tape. There you go. Okay, it's working. Hi, everyone. If we've never met, my name is Kate. A lot of people, they get a fun little surprise when they find out I'm one of the Roberts kids because I'm one of the only ones that doesn't come up here and do You're things. You're up here now. I am up here now, yeah. <laughs> um, but anyways, tomorrow is Monday, and at 6 a.m., we are intentionally coming to gather here and minister and like to the Spirit of God and for each other by just praying in the Spirit for one hour. That's it. And... I like the reason we're doing this is not just to add another thing because everyone has things that they're doing and we have so much going on here all the time. You all have so many things going on. But what happened here when Joe Bieber and David Cuffett was here was not just a small, exciting hype thing. Um, I personally believe that the Lord deposited something in this house and his people. And I believe it's our responsibility as followers of Jesus to respond to what he's doing and to steward well what he is doing. So we're responding simply by meeting here at 6 a.m. Mondays, week after week after week. A lot of you go to the gym in the morning. A lot of you go get coffee early in the morning. But a lot of you might not pray in the morning. So here's a perfect opportunity to come. And look, you don't need to be an expert prayer. I just heard from a friend the other day, the secret to prayer is just doing it. So I want to encourage you to come here at 6 a.m. tomorrow. It's really early. We, we all aren't going to look at each other too closely. I know some of us might just roll out of bed and come. That's okay. Just come and do it. So I want to encourage you to come to learn to pray, to pray, to be together. And like something powerful happens when more than one person comes together in the name of the Lord um, for one another. And we're just really excited. And I will say this to finish. We're coming together not to pray specifically for ourselves and our needs, but we're coming to pray for, for the lost, for the broken, for the hurting. And the Lord honors that. And it's just, I'm just excited. I'm excited to respond to what he's doing because there's a grace when we respond to what he's doing. He has everything that we need to do it. So I hope to see you there. If you have any questions, you can let me know. You can let Pastor Dan know or whoever, but come tomorrow morning, 6 a.m. It's going to be good. I'm excited. Yeah. Thanks, Kate. I will at 6 a.m. tomorrow.
All right, so uh, Galatians chapter 5. And let me just add on to what Kate's saying. If you get here at 10 after 6 and you leave at 20 after 6, God bless you. That's great. 10 minutes. We're not taking attendance. We're not saying you have to do an hour or you're out. We will be here praying for an hour. You can come any time in that window. You are welcome to come. And hopefully, you got to start somewhere, but hopefully that will start to multiply that somebody else will say, you know, Wednesday is a better day for me. Is there any way that I can come in at 6 a.m. and pray on Wednesday? And maybe in a period of time, a year, five years from now, maybe prayer will happen in this building or the building that we're in seven days a week. That's my plan. But we're starting with an hour. The door will be unlocked. We'll probably meet in the kitchenette or something. And it's not going to be talking about what we're shopping for Christmas. We're going to pray in the Holy Ghost or we're going to be quiet. It might, you might get a little wink like, hey, nice to see you, but it's not going to be engaging in conversation. We are here to pray. And uh, we want to see God move. So that's the thing that brings us closer together uh, in the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5. And we're just pop through, maybe we'll start at verse 6. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything. He's referring to the law there. That's the terminology. But faith working through love. So what matters is our faith working through love. So as Caitlin mentioned, we're gathering together tomorrow to pray. And we're exhibiting faith because you don't feel like praying at 6 a.m. Usually. Unless you're up at 4 a.m. and get yourself ready to be able to pray at 6 a.m. One of the greatest times when I was with these men and women of God this last week was sharing at the dinner table or when we were relaxing and sharing and talking about some of our failures. Because you see these people, and they do have great miracles. Joe Bieber is no small potatoes in the kingdom of God. He sees miraculous things happen. But he's also had multiple times when it just didn't work. He shared some of them here, and that ministered to me the most, because I'll confess to you, there's many times that I have said, God, like, am I doing something wrong? Why this or why that? I know friends, they've gone to somewhere and then instantly they everything just seems to work for them. But then I get ministries come in and they'll speak over Linda and I, pray prophetic words, and I'll think, oh my goodness, that's exactly what's been said to us for the last 10, 15, 20 years. I found one of those little recorders. I used to carry this little digital recorder back 15 years ago, I found it this week. I was just going through a drawer and it was in there and I popped in a couple of batteries and sure enough, the memory was still in it and I I played it and Joel's on there. I played it for Joel and uh, I interviewed him. He went to heaven and I went, Joel, what happened? He goes, it was really great. I went up and I saw it was like a circus, Dad, and the streets were gold. And Joel's talking in his high voice. And he's talking all about heaven. And I'm like, man, this is like 15 years ago. And then I blip to another one, and Larry Randolph. Does anybody know Larry Randolph? Linda and I are down in at the embassy in Oshawa. There's like 1,500 people. Do you remember that? And Larry prophesies over Linda and I. I I'm going to transcribe it. Because he says everything we're doing now, 15 years later, he says things like, I know it's been hard for you, and it's been a struggle. And he goes, do you play guitar? So, like Whitney said, get your mind off of your breakthrough. As I get my mind on Christ, Because he's already broken through. He's saying to us, be of good cheer. I've already overcome the world. What I'm doing in you right now is based on you overcoming the world. And when you overcome the world, 
then I've got a vessel that I can flow through. Faith working through love. Faith working through love. Verse 7. You ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion does not come from he, him who calls you. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. I have confidence in you, in the Lord, that you will have no other mind, but he who troubles you shall bear his judgment, whoever he is. And I, brethren, if I still preach circumcision, why do I suffer persecution? Then the offense of the cross has ceased. I wish that those who trouble you would even cut themselves off. Anyway, there's a little tongue-in-cheek from Apostle Paul there. Verse 13. And you, you can put your name here. For you, Dan, have been called to liberty. I've been called to liberty. But do not use the liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For all the laws fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by one another. Verse 16, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh, for the flesh lusts against the Spirit and the Spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. And he gets into what the, the law is. Verse 21, the end of it, those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passion. So, crucifying the flesh leads to liberty. It almost sounds contrary. Because there's this really weird religious blanket that says, oh, i got to die to the flesh. It's going to be awful. Ugh. I'd come to Jesus, but I'd have to give up too much. You'd have to give up sorrow, envy, jealousy, worldliness, longing for things you don't have. Man, godliness with contentment, the Bible says, is great gain. And some of us that have lived a little longer than some of others around us, we realize the older you get, what you put value on shifts. And I think that's true in the kingdom as well. The Bible actually says it's much better to give than to receive. And as Kate was saying, we're not coming here to pray for ourselves. Like, oh, here's my list. Pray for me this morning. No, we're coming to just pray. You know, I, I got this given to me a week or so ago. And uh, it's Brace Bridge out of the cold. And I was so excited, the man that came in. His name's actually Michael Smith. And uh, his email is on here and his phone number's on here. And he's looking for people that can give two to three hours a month. That's not very much. To help out with this. And he said, do you think anybody in your church would be interested? I said, absolutely we would be. We would love to serve our community any way we can. Not to wear a badge and says, Life Church, how are you doing? You want some cards? Just there to go and serve. And he gave me the phone number of another pastor in the region who's coordinating community needs. I thought, man, God, you're doing it. Let's go over to Daniel. Daniel chapter 2. By the way, when you're on your way to Daniel, it says in First Kings, I mentioned this because it's been rolling around. I, I might have mentioned it a month or so ago, and, and then 
I think Joe Bieber mentioned a little bit of this scripture as well when he was here. But in 1 Kings 19, 19, so he departed from there and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him. And he was with the 12th. Then Elisha passed by him and threw his mantle on him. He left the oxen, ran after Elijah, and said, Please, let me kiss my father and mother, and then I will follow you. And he said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? So Elisha turned back from him, took the yoke of oxen, slaughtered them, boiled the flesh, using the ox's equipment, and gave it to the people, and they ate. And he arose and followed Elijah and became his servant. And we're on our way to Daniel chapter 2. Somebody's like, what has that got to do with anything? Oh, let me tell you. There was one night we were in here, and they, I think it was the last night, and they said, who feels called to ministry? I didn't even look, but apparently there was a lot of people. And if you're attracted to this house, you do have a call of ministry because we are a sending type house. But the point that I wanted to get to with that story in Kings is that when Elijah, the prophet, the seasoned prophet, came up along Elisha, who had a calling, what was Elisha doing? Not only was he plowing, but 12 is a government number. 12 apostles, 12 months of the year. He was plowing with authority. So let me draw a parallel to plowing in the natural realm and plowing in the spiritual realm. And what he literally did, the prophet came and threw his mantle on him. And when he recognized, I'm dropping a lot of stuff here. A lot of times, you won't even recognize the mantle that's dropped upon you if you're not plowing. Oh, Joe Beaver, yeah, he's all right. How's your prayer life? Yeah, I heard those kind of stories before. Oh. How's your walk with God? Because those guys pray two, three hours a day. A day. They're plowing for you. They're not doing it for a new car or a big house. Though those things usually come because when this thing dies... God's able to trust. Let's go over to Daniel, because we're going to go a little bit deeper. And this is... Yeah, I'll just leave it at that. So basically, chapter 2, Nebuchadnezzar, in the second year of Nebuchadnezzar's reign, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams and his spirit was so troubled that his sleep left him. So I'm going to summarize because we don't have a lot of time to read all of this. But Nebuchadnezzar has dreams. He's a king. He's a ruler. Um, I love veggie tales because they call him Mr. Nezzar. Anybody watch veggie tales to get a kick out of it? They put those jokes in for the parents, Right? So they call him Mr. Nezer. But Mr. Nezer, King Nebuchadnezzar, has a dream. And in the dream, he's very troubled. So he asks all his advisors, interpret the dream. And they're, they're saying, tell me the dream. He says, uh-uh. You tell me the dream. This is what we're in right now in 2023. The world is saying, I'm distressed. And if they come to the church, the old way of doing it's not going to work. Come on in, have some pie. We're doing a fundraiser and giving away an Xbox. 
the PS7 or whatever they're at now, 4, 3, 2. Those things are okay. Those things are okay. They are. We need the Holy Spirit. So Daniel, we pick up the story. Daniel has been actually taken captive. So he's there actually captive under King Nebuchadnezzar. And in verse 14, Daniel is confronted by one of the henchmen of King Nebuchadnezzar because nobody could tell the king his dream. They're like, this is impossible, man. We don't know what your dream was. Tell us and we'll interpret it. He's like, if you're really wise people and you really hear in the spiritual realm, you're going to tell me what my dream is and then you're going to tell me to interpret it. And, and, and they, they're like, we can't. All the wise people. King says, you're all dead. You guys aren't wise at all. The gig is up. That's where we are in the spirit right now. The gig's up. Daniel here gets confronted. And in verse 14, we're just going to take three little points from this. Proverbs 15, 1 says, a, a, a gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. When you take anger and confrontation out of the picture, then intelligence takes over. And Daniel here, he's confronted, and, and, and when, I better read it out of the word so I don't muddle it up. So, verse 13 of Daniel chapter 2, so the decree went out and they began killing the wise men. And they sought Daniel and his command, companions to kill them. And that's, that's when life becomes real. The police are here. You know what I was watching for? Who's running out the door first? And who's staying beside me? Anyway, I'll won't digress. Then with counsel and wisdom, Daniel answered Arioch, the captain of the king's guard who had gone out to kill the wise men of Babylon. And he answered and said to Arioch, the king's captain, why is the decree from the king so urgent? And Arioch made the decision known to Daniel. So Daniel went in and asked the king to give him t- time that he might tell the king the interpretation. Whoa! If you give me some time, king, I will tell you the interpretation. Any pressure in that statement? So first of all, he confronts it. But he doesn't get all squirrely and weird. He confronts it with wisdom from God. The fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5. There's a reason why I went there. In this day and age that we're in, I don't, it doesn't matter how great you can dream dreams, prophesy, wave your hand over things, money comes to you. I want to see the fruit. So when the pressure's on, are you getting all yelly and screaming, or are you causing division? Are you, because that's not the fruit of the Spirit. I want to see the fruit, if David Cuppet was here. I want to see the fruit, baby. He says baby a lot if you haven't. Maybe he's watching. Hi, Dave. Anyway, he's deer hunting today, so God bless him. Uh, and that's, that's what I mean, because the world doesn't buy it. That if you, have, if you kind of are operating in this much of the kingdom, but this much you're leaving out. Fruit takes time. You can't fake fruit. That's why we're doing Mondays. Next key verse, 17. Then Daniel went to his house and made the decision known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azria, his companions. Verse 18 that they might seek mercies from the God of heaven concerning this secret 
so that Daniel and his companions might not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Try not and read the next verse. Now everybody's reading the next verse. Do you know what that verse is? Intercession. That verse that I just read, he went home, he said, Yo, turn off the Xbox, PS5, stop doom scrolling. Is it doom scrolling or tomb scrolling? It's doom. Stop doom scrolling. We call each other out at the house. What are you doing, Dad? Are you doom scrolling? Nope, nope. Uh, just uh, picking up my book again. We try to call each other out on it. He called them to prayer. Read it. He made them known. He said, this is what's going on. And I told the king that I will tell him if you give me time. I reached out in faith. And then the very next verse, we see what happens. Then the secret was revealed to Daniel in a night vision. So Daniel blessed the God of heaven. And that's what God does many times. It'll be in the night. There's no natural light. When everybody else is goofing around and filling their face with corn chips, you're pacing the floor. Or maybe they're at home sucking on their pillow at 6 o'clock because they were doom scrolling till 2 a.m. But you got up at 5.30 to be at the church for six to pray and intercede for Grace Bridge. Because I will not just hope, but I will guarantee, I guarantee that when we enter into this season corporately, because some of this stuff we've been doing for years, this isn't a new revelation to some of us, but when we now, this is the first time we've ever opened it up for the church to come and pray we will see an increase in dreams and visions. Secrets will be revealed. And Daniel eludes in that verse, he gave God all the praise. That tells me the maturity level in Daniel. He didn't, he didn't, first of all, to go home and tell his friends, guys, I'll summarize, or I'll say behind the scenes what the Scripture doesn't say is, he, he went home and said, we need to pray. we got 48 hours. And I mean, the rest of the story is, Daniel told him the dream. And Daniel and his friends were promoted again. Because the beginning of Daniel and his friends were, when they were captive, they were already separate. They didn't partake of the king's table like all the rest of them. They were allotted special privileges when they were captured because they were the wise men. They were the cream of the crop, and they said, come and dine. And it wasn't just because Daniel was a vegetarian. It, it wasn't he was, wasn't a vegetarian. In the original language, he actually, and I'm asking the Lord for more revelation on this, but the original language actually says that, no, can, is it possible that we don't eat the delicacies and the wine from the king's table. We only want to partake that from things that have had seeds, which translates to vegetables. So I'm like, God? Now, there's a lot of different theologians that talk about things, and they say it's because some of the king's meat was was dedicated to idols and Daniel didn't want to defile himself. The point is, Daniel did right from the beginning did not want to be one of the worldly ones even though there was favor on his life. You can have favor on your life and still not be of the world. And if you do have favor on your life, you need wisdom from God. Because that religious spirit will try to take you, direct you, manipulate you, and control you. Then God's spirit is saying, there is favor on your life for a reason. 
develop it. Pray. Develop this spirit, man. Still do those things you've been called to do. But do it out of the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Oh, another time. First Thessalonians five, sixteen to eighteen. There are three little verses, and they say, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Wow. Kind of sums it up right there. Rejoice always. But you don't understand what I'm going through. You don't understand why I'm rejoicing. Oh my gosh! I get up at six a.m., but I go to the gym because I want to. I want to work out my body. I get up and pray at six a.m. because I want to put my body under the dominion of the Spirit, where real life is. You really can have blessing, favor, increase, the joy of the Lord, and as Whitney said. She doesn't know when breakthrough is going to happen for you individually. Be of good cheer. He's already overcome the world. Tribulation is in the world. What are we doing with that? We got, he's overcome. We got tribulation. There's a wrestling match over our head all the time. Fear and faith are floating there all the time. Which one are we pulling on? All the time, they're there. Lord, I thank you for a church that knows how to pray. I thank you, God, that we are going to see influence and change in our region because the love you have for this region. Lord, those words that have been spoken over individuals, those words that have been spoken over this house that even Joe Bieber, when he said in the natural realm, we're going into winter, but you guys as a church, you're going into harvest. Lord, we thank you for that, that many times you will do completely the opposite because you are God. Anything's possible. You confound the wise. You use the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. You are the one that lifts one up and puts another one down. Lord, may we as a church, may we as a body be found faithful. So I thank you for every person here today. I thank you for every person watching online. there's an opportunity right now to seek God while he may be found. Lord, I thank you for the mystery of prayer. I thank you for the mystery of the supernatural realm. But as we just read this morning, when they corporately got together, family, the people that he was doing life with, and they interceded that day or that night or whatever it was, they travailed in that night season, the secret was revealed. So I release that over this house, God. When we seek you first, your kingdom, and all those things that we desire will be added to us when we seek, when we truly seek first your kingdom. I bless every person here, every person watching, even those that are watching and they persecuted us. God bless you. We pray for you. Good to see you watching online today checking us out. It's okay. Because God's bigger than all of that stuff. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for Bracebridge. We thank you for Huntsville. We thank you for Gravenhurst. We thank you for 
all this region of Muskoka, God, what you want to do here, the ministries that are here, the people that have been drawn here and they're bored. Lord, we bless the other ministries and churches and we focus really on what you've given us to steward. And I thank you that this coming year, 2024, you're going to make some great strides forward to see people blessed, healed, saved, delivered, families coming back. Peace in the home, the joy of the Lord, marriages, exciting, restored, the zeal to live, a revelation that I'm not too young, I'm not too old. I can do anything through Christ who strengthens me. I bless every person watching. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're joining us online today, God bless you. Come see us in person. We'll be here Wednesday night at 6.30 for our presence night. Bible school courses after that. And uh, hopefully you can come to our Christmas banquet. Anyways, we'll see. Oh, and we've got Daniel Soto on the 3rd? Oh, next week. Man, well, I'm, he can't come. I have to continue on. The two Daniels. We'll, we'll ship God bless you if you're watching online. We'll see you later.